This is the ZNS Network, providing radio and high-definition television services for the entire Bahamas. ZNS Network is operated by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. It is located at Harcourt Rusty Bethel Drive, Centerville, Nassau. Our programming is designed to inform, educate, and entertain. We invite you to join us. The following is the preamble of the Constitution of the Bahamas, which was made on June 20th, 1973, and came into operation July 10th, 1973. Whereas 481 years ago, the rediscovery of this family of islands, rocks and keys, heralded the rebirth of the new world. And whereas the people of this family of islands, recognizing that the preservation of their freedom will be guaranteed by a national commitment to self-discipline, industry, loyalty, unity, and an abiding respect for Christian values and the rule of law. Now know we therefore we the inheritors of and successors to this family of Allens, recognizing the supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual do hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. In an effort to spur construction activity and thereby mobilize domestic capital, we are reducing the duty on all building materials to 20%. We warned the government to leave some borrowing headroom on a rainy day fund for the days like this. Get ready to leverage the situation. I think we need to look at this moment as opportunities. Emergency powers to be extended, more money for the national COVID response and tax deductions. Good morning, everyone. I'm Makushla Pinder, and this is your morning edition. House members will this morning debate a resolution. Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, tabled in the House of Assembly on Wednesday. That resolution speaks to extending the country's state of emergency to June 29th. Here's what was said at the time. And, um have the opportunity tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, to further extend liberalization and free movement of certain sectors in the Bahamas to be recognized that individuals may have been under lockdown curfew order for some time. And we think it's, it's um, we're on the right track. We think we're in good stead if we were to with a liberalized um, the Bahamas, that is, both the Providence, Grand Bahama, and other family islands. And um, more details, speaker, inclusive of the church, as we all need spiritual healing, not only medical healing, not only economic healing, but more details would be given tomorrow as to the layout as we continue progress along our phase, phase one, phase one B, phase two, three, as we continue to advance so that we can open our country for international travel. A state of emergency was declared back on March 19th. The government has taken a phased approach to reopening with 100 cases, COVID-19 cases, that is, and 11 deaths on record. The Bahamas recently began transitioning to phase two. Well, if the global pandemic has taught the Minnis administration anything, it said the Bahamas must improve the resiliency of the public health sector. Ensuring so has led to the government upping its allocation to the national COVID-19 response by $20 million. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquist adds that the economic support measures in this regard will continue. We are allocating over $250 million 
to extend and expand the initiatives we implemented in early March into the first half of the upcoming fiscal year. These measures include $48 million for continued unemployment assistance for persons who remain dislocated, $17 million in increased social welfare spending to provide expanded food assistance through the government's food voucher initiative, as well as to support the expansion of other support programs at the Ministry of Social Services. As a new measure, we will also fund a temporary incremental monthly increase of $50 in the old age pension administered by the National Social Service. And this to aid the elderly who may be dependent on other family members that are now jobless because of the pandemic. NIB is working on a rollout date for this program and will communicate with the public when it begins. Further $20 million in contingency funding has been allocated for public health sector support. Trinqua says the money is to ensure there is sufficient funding for ongoing detection, treatment and mitigation of COVID-19 here in the Bahamas. This will cover the cost for medical equipment and supplies, ensuring sustainable quarantine facilities if needed, and other measures to make certain that this country is fully equipped to combat the spread of the virus. Now, besides the expanded allocations to address COVID-19, the 2020-2021 budget will also reflect an increased allocation of $18 million to national health insurance. Primary care delivery is estimated to cost the government $83.3 million each year. Without significant change to the delivery model, this would escalate to $127.7 million by 2025, an increase of $44.4 million. The integration and streamlining of these separate healthcare delivery systems are essential to ensure better quality care of patients. Therefore, the government is proposing for the National Health Insurance Authority to lead a series of reforms which would effectively and efficiently, efficiently address the ongoing challenges. Their refocused NHI initiative will require no additional taxation or employee mandate. Now, Ternko says more importantly, it's to ensure that everyone has consistent access to a family doctor with minimal copay requirements and deductibles. This is expected to save the government approximately $62 million. And that's over the next five years. Now, as the Minister of Finance has said ahead of the budget, there will be no new taxes in the upcoming fiscal period. There will, however, be tax deductions. For the agriculture and fisheries industry, we will, re we will reduce the duty on fishing materials from 45% to 20%, effective July 1st, 2020. Some of these items include fishing rods, reels, lines, tackles, and other materials. We are also reducing the duty on farming equipment for the use of back backyard farming from 25% to 10%. And some of these items include, in this package, are spades and shovels and workbenches, machetes and heads, chairs, and et cetera. In an effort to spur construction activity, and thereby mobilize domestic capital, we are reducing the duty on all building materials to 20%, down from 45%. This includes, but is not limited, to wood, glass, granite, steel, electrical supplies and fixtures, carpets, landscaping material, and plumbing material. Support for ongoing hurricane recovery finds the government extending the special economic zone to December from January 2021 to June of that same year. The concessions will be extended to cover building materials only. Tax reliefs also include this. We are removing the duty from nitrile examination gloves, antibacterial gloves which are used as personal protective equipment to make it less costly for hospitals, companies, and individuals to acquire these. For a period of one year, 
We will remove the duty on other PPE items, such as gowns and other surgical supplies, to ensure our health care workers, both private and public, are protected as we continue to fight this pandemic. We're expanding the tax-free transfer of land where there is no change in beneficial ownership with the approval of the VAT controller. Duty will also go down on environmental environmental sea trash cans, reusable metal water bottles, motorcycles with an engine size of 125 cc or less, and electrical motorcycles. We are pleased to announce that for the first time, the government will provide for a back-to-school VAT holiday yeah. on school supplies, clothing, and selective food items for the two weeks leading to the reopening of school. Thereby providing millions of dollars in savings in the aggregate for parents across the country as they prepare students to return to school. I would note that the tax exemption of the VAT holiday will only apply to items that are bought inside the country and not those that are imported directly into the country. Mr. Speaker, just as we want to support Bahamian parents in this, co in this costly annual undertaking, we also want to support local business. And so we, Mr. Speaker, want to encourage you and all Bahamians to shop at home. Well, a fiery statement from the deputy leader of the official opposition, Chester Cooper, following the 2020-2021 budget communication in the House of Assembly yesterday. The Progressive Liberal Party's point man on finance summing up the proposed fiscal plan in just three words. Uninspiring, unimaginative, and unimpressive. Flanked by parliamentary colleagues on the steps of the Senate, Cooper called the two-hour budget presentation unworthy, charging that the decisions made in Parliament do not reflect tough financial times in the face of COVID-19, but rather the impact of what he calls a series of bad fiscal decisions the government's made. We warned the government to leave some borrowing headroom on a rainy day fund for the days like this, but they did not. Hence, another downgrade of our sovereign credit rating. And now we find ourselves in the embrace of the IMF. We are hand in hand having to accept its no strings attached offer. Now, the government announced a plan to borrow over $200 million from the International Monetary Fund in an attempt to supplement its accounts. Cooper took serious issue with this as well as proposed budget allocations. Furthermore, he's of the view that to cut aspects like breakfast and lunch at the House of Assembly do not make a dent. And that though finance would have increased allocations to ministries like social services and agriculture, these are really under investments. A food security investment of less than $2 million on a $3 billion import bill is another sign of lip service and not real action. So where are the plans for Grand Bahama and Abaco? These islands need structured assistance and can be drivers of a national rebound. A well, former State Minister of Finance, Shivargo, lying weighing in on the 2020-2021 budget as well. In doing so, he says he's not at all surprised that the government opted out of imposing new or increasing taxes in the upcoming budget year. Well, the government really doesn't have any options other than the extent to which it opens the economy up and begins to get another uh, a broader base on which to uh, re to get some revenue or increase revenue and then to borrow to cover whatever deficit it has that has to be its short term uh, uh, avenue is to borrow substantially i believe to cover the shortfall and then hope that the economic environment over time improves sufficiently to support the financing of that borrowing. 
uh, barring that, uh, there's really nothing else the government can do. Well, the business of the Senate is expected to resume following today's House meeting. Leader of government business, Senator the Honorable Dr. The, the Honorable Dion Folks at the upper chamber will meet at 3 p.m. today to debate the emergency order from the House of Assembly. Still to come, the impact COVID-19 is having on small businesses here in the Bahamas. That story and more when the morning edition continues. Hey, have you heard? ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Whether you're on the move or just kicking back. Miss something on the news? It's there. Want to keep up with a live update? It's there. Or just want to listen to your favorite station? It's there too. Download the app now from the App Store and Google Play Store. It's a part of all our lives. ZNS TV is where we go for information. Entertainment. And enjoyment. ZNS is there with something for everyone. Kids, lunch is ready. ZNS TV, a part of our lives for 40 years. Stay COVID free. Remember the three S's sanitize, social distance, and stay inside. BBSQ invites you to celebrate World Metrology Day, highlighting the critical role measurement plays in global trade. BBSQ regulates all weights and measures activities within the Bahamas, so you receive quality goods and services. Hey, it's me, Julian Believe. Let me tell you something. This coronavirus pandemic is serious. I believe in you, and I know you believe in me. So let's social distance. Let's wash our hands. Let's stay at home. And if we have to go out, which we shouldn't, but maybe if we have to go to the food store and it's one person per household, we should stay away from large crowds and we should be six feet apart from any person. If you do your part, and I do my part, then we can fight this and get through this together. I believe in you, so believe in me. And let's fight the coronavirus pandemic. Believe in yourself. That's the motto. That's where we should live.
The budget allocation for small business growth and development expected to increase to $55 million. Finance Minister the Honorable Peter Turnqua says this is to allow companies to seek funding and further assistance. The assistance comes at a time when close to 300 local businesses have sought help through the Small Business Development Center and its partners. Here is Chair of the Economic Development and Trade Division of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation, Hubert Edwards, on the current business climate in the country. The business community is challenged at this moment. As you're aware, most businesses are closed because the situation demands that only essential businesses are open. Over time, we have seen extension or exemptions which have been given and I think bit by bit we're now seeing a gradual move to opening but you know the the the, the, the dime has not yet dropped uh, persons need to go back to business they need to be an assessment of exactly what is there and usually in situations like this you always have casualties so we can expect that some persons are going to be challenged some may even go out of business Meantime, Edwards says despite the current economic climate the country faces, this is an opportune time for Bahamians to explore new ventures. Get ready to be creative. Many individuals are going to lose their jobs. There are some persons who have up to now have always been employees. But get ready to leverage the situation. I think we need to look at this moment as opportunities. You wanted to do that job or you wanted to go into business for the longest while. This may be the, the time to do it. And what is I think what is very important, keep your resources as best possible you have to manage your resources because things are going to get tight you don't you can't do the extra spending you can't go to the bars you can't do the things that you used to do but more than anything as I think Bahamians need to stay positive they need to understand that this is a season it will end it will not be easy but if the entire country comes together as a collective and start to think about how do we move forward and make this country better move with the government move with the opposition move with all of the parties, the private sector, the public sector working together, I think sooner or later we will be out of this. It is always said that Bahamians are very resilient. This is the moment to show exactly what Bahamians are made of. A number of staple events on the Ministry of Tourism's calendar all cancelled due to coronavirus concerns. The much anticipated events pull in large crowds, something discouraged at this time. Many of our major um, events, especially domestic events, if we look at Bahamas Junkin' of Summer, if we look at Pineapple Festival, um, Gombe um, Summer in our family islands, Junkin' of Summer Festival in our family island, hugely popular. But I think everybody appreciates that this is not the time for large gatherings, for people to be in a confined space. So we're dealing with two, um, two issues. One, obviously funding government has made it clear it won't be business as usual in, in terms um, or from a financial aspect for 2020 2021 government has been shut down there's been no revenue coming in so the support that we would have gotten from the ministry of finance to help fund those events it is not going to be forthcoming that's the first thing some director general joy jibberlu adds that funding was not the only factor they considered but the second thing also is the health aspect of it and knowing that this is not the time for large gatherings in June or July. And so until we know that the health officials are comfortable with us staging these larger events, we have um, cancelled them or postponed them. I think that's a better option. Postpone them for the time being until we learn the mechanisms by which we can have these events. Germany in its last days of a two-week lockdown, we spoke with Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Delon Brennan on how things are going health-wise on that island. Taking a segue to the latest COVID-19 dashboard, the country remaining at 100 confirmed cases now for five consecutive days as of May 27th. 46 recoveries, 43 active cases, still six hospitalized persons. Tests completed passing the 2,000 mark, now pegged at 2,043, and still... 11 deaths. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Delon Brennan is joining us today. Good morning, Dr. Brennan. Uh, good morning, Ms. Allen. It's now hours away from that two-week Bimini lockdown ending. 
Was the measure successful in reducing, tracking, and containing COVID-19 on that island? So far from the Ministry of Health's understanding of what's going on on the island, there have not been any additional persons that have presented with symptoms that would be suggestive of COVID-19. Um, things appear to be working out well when it comes to people staying inside, staying within their own households, um, not, you know, uh, sort of socializing with others in the community, um, receiving the food and things of the like that they need. So those things appear to be going well. Once the lockdown is completed, we will do a round of testing um, within the community, just doing a sampling to see if we don't see any spread that's actually going on, um, not just subjectively, but also objectively. And new developments on the international front, specifically from Italian officials. Following an autopsy of a COVID-19 cadaver, officials there determined that blood clotting was the towering factor in COVID-19 deaths they have transformed treatment with prescribed 100 milligram Advil as part of the suite of instruments to help patients. Are local officials utilizing this method? So what we've noticed uh, over the past few months is that clotting has definitely been a challenge um, in the scientific literature. Um, it wasn't necessarily known early on, let's say January, February, but as we began to have more cases, especially in the U.S. and the U.K., um, we definitely saw that being a, a bit of an issue with patients. And so treatment regimens definitely started to include other types of anticoagulants or blood thinners um, in the use of patients, especially those who were gravely ill or those who um, had risk factors for clotting disorders. And so that was definitely part of the regimen. And earlier this week, you indicated some challenges with quarantine patients using the new tracking app. Are there still issues? And overall, what percentage uh, would you say of those patients are now successfully onboarded? So we definitely had some stumbling blocks initially. I think people just didn't know what the software was. They didn't um, have an idea as to that this would be a part of it, even though um, as people are going into quarantine, we give them a set of instructions that include the monitoring aspect. And so um, persons, I guess, just didn't pay attention to that because it hadn't been rolled out yet. But now that it has, we bring people's attention to it. So it is a lot more successful. And we're seeing a lot of people who are participating willingly in the program we also let people know that the issue is um, if persons aren't participating in the electronic monitoring of the program, um, then you'll have persons who will come to your house and evaluate whether you're actually at home or not. Um, if both, neither one of those is successful, then we have to involve peace officers um, to engage you because at that point, we're not sure that you're paying attention um, and following the rules of quarantine. And finally, yesterday, information on the added budget allocation for the COVID-19 response from Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Peter Turnquist, who noted some efforts toward PPEs and other essential equipment. Tell us, where is funding most needed? I think one of the things um, that's going to be most needed for us is really in personnel and making sure that we um, solidify our human resources, that we are able to do so in a way um, that makes sure that we have 24-7 coverage. We have people who are able to um, do the contact tracing, that are able to follow those who are coming um, from quarantine into quarantine, those who are coming back on repatriation, um, other international travelers, Bahamian residents um, who are coming at other times on charter. Um, those those who are transiting our family islands. It is a, an all-encompassing activity um, that we can't just say is going on from nine to five. So you need to bring in additional personnel and recruit other personnel um, to be able to do this as a 24-7 activity. And so um, while we don't have a lot of cases, we do need to make sure that we are protecting them while they're doing that activity. But we need to have boots on the ground and these technology solutions and the like rolled out to be able to make sure we're paying attention to what's going on in our community. Dr. Brennan, again, thank you for your information. Appreciate it, Mr. Allen. For the morning edition, Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News. Coming up, tomorrow's repatriation flight on hold.
Did you know that there are over 30,000 Bahamians with diabetes and another 23,000 with prediabetes? Each year, this number is expected to increase. Many people who have diabetes are unaware. If you are having blurry vision, feeling thirsty, urinating frequently, or are unusually tired or losing weight despite a healthy diet, you may have diabetes. If you have a parent or sibling that has diabetes, you are also at an increased risk of developing diabetes. If you have noticed any of these symptoms, it is important to see your doctor who will perform the necessary test to confirm the diagnosis. Together, we can beat diabetes. Andres is the number one born fishing destination on our planet. Sports fishermen visit our flats every year to participate in one of the most fulfilling outdoor activities known to man, fly fishing. And guess what? It's 100% sustainable. Without areas like the west side of Andres, sustaining this industry would be absolutely impossible. So let's take care of nature, and nature will take care of us. Hello, my name is Mikhail Roll, and I am seven years old. I know that COVID-19 is on everyone's mind. We have to follow all guidelines set by the government in order to slow the spread of the virus. Remember to wear your homemade face masks, wash your hands frequently, cover your coughs and sneezes, and practice social distancing by staying at least six feet away from each other. But most importantly, stay inside. I repeat, stay inside. Only leave your home for emergencies or to purchase essential items. Let's all work together to get rid of COVID-19. 242, it's not fun, but it must be done. Thank you and bye-bye. This PSA was brought to you by the Broadcasting Cooperation of the Bahamas, and C-Rolls Video. The Ministry of Health wishes to advise members of the public that prevention is key during this flu season. Practicing good cough hygiene can make the difference between you and your loved ones getting the flu or spreading the influenza virus. Good cough hygiene habits include covering your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing, and proper disposal of the tissue in a trash bin. Coughing or sneezing into your upper sleeve near your inner elbow and not your hands when a tissue is not available. Avoiding the use of handkerchiefs and towels as they hold germs, becoming a nest for the virus. And frequently washing your hands with soap and water, which is listed as one of the most important steps you can take to avoid getting sick and passing the virus on to others. If you have any questions about how to practice good cough hygiene to avoid catching or spreading the flu, contact your nearest community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. Friday's repatriation flight from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to New Providence has been postponed due to administrative reasons. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs noting in a statement that the postponement, though, gives individuals get additional time to get the COVID-19 test from an accredited laboratory. Information on the new travel date will be provided. Well, we are already battling COVID-19 and the rainy months are upon us, which can spark a breeding ground for mosquitoes. What will this bring? Well, this morning, Charles Fisher speaks with a health care official on how we can avoid another outbreak. Worldwide, we are battling this pandemic and need all hands on deck to eradicate it. The Bahamas Red Cross last year, after the passage of Hurricane Dorian, implemented its WASH initiative, water, sanitation, and hygiene. Its objective is to prevent epidemics from happening in the Bahamas. Dr. Bernadette Sanders, Health and Care Coordinator. The viruses is spread with um, contact, especially your hands, okay? Droplet infection from your nose and your mouth. And, we, uh, and the government has advocated that we wear masks, but our hands are, are corporate. So we have to make sure that they are washed and clean at all times. When you go to the food store to purchase disinfectant agents like Lysol and bleach, you will read and you will notice on the labels that it specifically 
says that it can kill the COVID virus. They can remove it, they can eliminate it. So these are the disinfectant agents that we are asking persons to use. Now, while concentration is on COVID-19, there is something else for him and should be concerned about. Zika, dengue, chikungunya, malaria, which is spread by mosquitoes. And if you notice that we've had a lot of rain lately, and we're accumulating a lot of garbage in our homes because as we stay at home, we're using more um, uh, more um, um, materials that uh, we're disposing of. Because, for example, if you were at work, you wouldn't be home to have lunch. So you wouldn't have those garbage accumulating. So that's an extra load. And then more persons are in the home at, at a given time. So you have a, an extra amount of garbage in your home. Therefore, you have to ensure that you dispose of this garbage adequately. While we are home, we'll help if we look around for mosquito breeding sites. You have the time now. You're not going to work. We are home. And especially on the weekend, we can do a mosquito breeding site search. And we can eliminate some of these mosquito breeding sites so that we don't we can keep down the breeding of mosquitoes. That mosquito by the name of the Aedes aegypti is always here. It lives in the Bahamas. All we need is one case and we will have an epidemic. We can have an epidemic if we have those mosquitoes breeding and we have that one case. So we want to eliminate mosquito breeding sites so that we can eliminate and keep down the, the, the breeding of these mosquitoes. So we all must do our part to eradicate these disease. For the Morning Edition, I'm Charles Fisher. Let's well, at this hour, many individuals are lining up at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium seeking assistance from National Insurance. How Lloyd Allen is there. Well, good morning again with Kushlo. Good morning, Bahamas. This morning, of course, we are out here at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium where several persons, it's just over about 100 people uh, from A to Z who are hoping to get that uh, important and much needed assistance from National Insurance. Taking a look at those persons behind the check, I'm speaking this morning with uh, Junior Ambrose Smith. He's a 35-year veteran from the tourism sector. Good morning, Mr. Smith. And talk to us about uh, your experience over the past 35 years in the tourism sector. Oh, in the tourism sector uh, for the past 35 years, it's been very successful and um, beautiful meeting uh, people from all over the world. And um, also a part of the um, the, 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 the kitchen, uh, a chef, being a chef with the NCL Cruise Line, also meeting people from abroad. Okay? Now, uh, you said it was just a few months before COVID-19 hit us here uh, that you actually had stopped working. Uh, talk to us about the details there and, um, and what brought you here this morning. Well, my last job was, was, um, was with um, um, Sandals. Sandals, and I've been there for over, let's say, two and a half years with Sandals, and I got laid off from there, and it's been like, um, like six months ago. So now, um, being six months ago without a job, there's nothing to be done and bring in to the home. So I just decided to put in for this um, social uh, money and assistance. So um, again, like many persons who have been coming out here to uh, National Insurance, uh, once you receive this check, how important is this for you in moving forward? Uh, this check, if I do receive this check, being lucky to receive this check, um, it's good to make the home, bring the home back together with some bills and stuff to be paid back and stuff like that. You know, taking care of the kids, they need to be fed. And I just hope that um, this comes true forward for me on, and for, for others. And uh, my final question, now moving beyond COVID-19, of course, uh, m most Bahamians, if not all, are hopeful for the country to move beyond this uh, situation of COVID-19. But once that happens uh, for yourself, you've been laid off, but are you hoping to go back to work? Um, yes, I'm hoping to go back to work, and hoping back, uh, most people go back to work because um, you want to bring the, the country forward. You know, we want to move forward and make sure that everything is in, in place. So again, that's Mr. Junior Smith. Uh, he's a 35-year veteran from the tourism sector. 
he, like many persons out here today and throughout the past three days, have been much hopeful for assistance from National Insurance. Today is the final day, and again, all of those persons from the names A through Z that would not have received assistance for the past two days, today is that final day to receive that much-needed assistance from the National Insurance Board. Reporting here from the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium for the morning edition, Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News. Now time for Divine Intervention, our pastoral motivation brought to you this morning by Dr. DeAnza Cunningham of Christ Community Church. Everything that occurs in our lives can be viewed through the lens of it being a lesson or a blessing. And may I tell you that this pandemic in which we find ourselves today is both. It is a lesson and a blessing. Accordingly, God calls to all of his agencies, family, government, and church, to reset. But especially to each of us, we are called individually to reset. Paul, the Apostle Paul, helps us in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. We all know that scripture. We're very familiar with it. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What Paul says to us is, uh, resetting requires three essentials. First of all, the essential of changing morally. Do not be conformed to this world. Secondly, the essential of changing mentally. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because if the truth be told, we need a new mindset as we enter this new normal. And then thirdly, of course, we are called to change motivationally. In other words, make sure that everything you do with your life matters. Everything counts in eternity. And as a child growing up in Crooked Island, I learned only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And so ladies and gentlemen, you want to enjoy this period? Change morally. Change mentally. And change motivationally. And you will stand strong. It is important to take precautions to reduce your risk of getting infected with COVID-19, even when you go to the grocery store. Practice physical distancing that is six feet apart from others while you wait in line to enter the store. One person per household needs to go. Use wipes to disinfect the cart or basket handle that you select. Avoid touching your face, unnecessary items, and surfaces. Try to touch only what you are buying. So carry a grocery list to help you move along quickly. Do not forget to wear a cloth mask while you do your shopping and carry hand sanitizer with you. Practice physical distancing that is six feet apart from others as you shop. And at the cash register. as little time as possible in the store and get enough groceries to last you for a while. Once your groceries are packed and loaded, use hand sanitizer and rub your hands together until they are completely dry. When you come home from the grocery store, take off your shoes at the door and put all of your grocery bags in one area. Disinfect your grocery bags. Rinse produce and wipe down cans and packages with soap and water before you put them away. Wash your hands thoroughly for 20 seconds when you are done. Wash your clothes and your reusable grocery bags. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Health in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. 
hepatitis is the inflammation of the liver, which is the organ responsible for filtering toxins from the body, producing bile for digestion, and producing proteins and clotting factors. The most important cause of hepatitis worldwide is viruses, of which there are five main types, A, B, C, D, and E. Hepatitis B and C are major health challenges globally, affecting over 300 million persons worldwide. The suspicion of hepatitis may be a challenge as there are typically no symptoms. However, if infected, non-specific symptoms may include decreased appetite, nausea, vague abdominal discomfort, jaundice or yellow eyes, and abnormal liver function tests. If not treated, hepatitis of any type can lead to cirrhosis and liver cancer, which leads to over 1 million deaths worldwide. If you suspect you may have been exposed to the virus that causes hepatitis, talk to your doctor today and get tested. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Public Hospitals Authority in conjunction with the Medical Association of the Bahamas and the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. The use of hand sanitizer is now a way of life. And as we continue to be health conscious, conscious, Charles Fisher spoke with a local pharmacist on the proper use of these products. When the pandemic first hit, there was a rush for the health products such as sanitizers. But according to Shantia McBride, president of the Bahamas Pharmaceutical Association, that has all cooled it down. Persons already have sufficient in supply or they're just purchasing as need be. Initially, they were purchasing excess. So now everyone have their supplies and they're generally just purchasing when needed. Even though we are using the sanitizers, it does not mean we should not do the most important thing. Should not um, eliminate hand washing. That should be your first option. Hand wash it for, with warm water for at least 20 seconds. If hand washing is not available to you, then the use of a hand sanitizer would be preferred or then is safe. The main objective is to prevent bacteria and viruses. So is there a negative effect for the misuse? If you continue to use it repeatedly, the inhalation effect, of course, there are films, it's alcohol-based, the inhalation effect of that, ensure that you properly read the manufacturer's instruction on your hand sanitizers that you're using to know the quantity to use, and also ensure that you rub it, as indicated, getting in the crease of the fingers, and ensure that it's dry before you go ahead and continue your, your daily routine. Sanitizers are alcohol-based, ethanol or isopropyl. There's been reports of cars catching a blaze because of these products being inside. Sanitizers, which should be 60% alcohol-based, would be the best ones to use. Because it's alcohol-based, it is flammable. Um, therefore, keeping hand sanitizer, whether in the car or near any flammable or heated machinery or anything, is harmful heat outside in the car may get up to 70, 80 degrees. However, there hasn't been any proven studies to indicate that the hand sanitizers being kept in the car would pose any fire hazards to your vehicle. Will it be the way moving forward to be more health and safety conscious? Before the pandemic, the norm for most persons were the little mini hand sanitizers. You know, most women or most persons have them for their kids um, for daily use. So with the pandemic um, occurring now, it'll be a norm that we will have to live through and which I think we're getting used to the mask and using the hand sanitizers on a regular basis now, washing, disinfecting, sanitizing our homes. So it is becoming a norm. It's what we have to, we've been gradually, we are getting used to it. It came as a shock, but yeah, we're up to the mandate now to continue using those products for our safety and well-being during this pandemic. So once again, safe practice habits, the best way moving forward. For the Morning Edition, I'm Charles Fisher. Well, in the face of continued lockdowns, regular exercise is key. And for your workout tips, return to Natasha Brown. A town time. Waking up every day with the right attitude makes all the difference. It's not what life brings to you. It's the attitude you choose to bring to life. Let's get right into these exercises. As you can see, we're using a chair, a 
small person that you wear up again in the morning. Have an awesome Thursday. Remember, the secret of our health lies in our daily routine. Until next time, I am downtown Natasha Brown, keeping you healthy, fit, and energized. I am the ultimate me. love most about working for the Bahamas tonight is that we don't only focus on New Providence. We cover the entire Bahamas. We have a team here in the Northern Bahamas that is ready to bring you the stories, the people, and the news that matter to you. From point A to Z, from covering hurricanes to elections and everything in between. Listen, when you're getting some gas at the gas station, when you're shopping at your favorite grocery store, how you know you get getting exactly what it is that you pay for? BBSQ, the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality. Now, they got a team of professionals trained and working all the time to ensure quality and safety of goods and services. They are doing something called metrology. Metrology works to protect consumers from receiving inaccurate quantities of goods purchased and measured and to protect sellers from delivering excess amounts of goods due to the use of inaccurate measuring instruments. They have equipment to go in the stores and gas stations all over the Bahamas. What do we use to verify the accuracy of volume at your favorite gas station, you may ask? A test measure. This is a volumetric standard used to verify gas, diesel, and other liquid dispensing devices. They use the weight to ensure the scale is reading properly. Now, when it comes to grocery stores, we use these mass standards. These are specialized equipment used to verify that instruments, like weighing scales, are accurate. BBSQ is making sure the consumers are getting their money's worth and that the businesses are getting treated fairly. Because of the work BBSQ does behind the scenes and in the field, quality is a guarantee. This public service announcement brought to you by the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality, the Counselors Limited, and by the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. This weather report is sponsored by Bank of the Bahamas, the bank of solutions. home videos of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to pay homage to frontliners in the fight every day. I think I speak for everyone when I say thank you for your hard work, commitment, and dedication. I know it's not time for a celebration, but I raise my glass to you, standing ovation. Because thousands around the world didn't make it, and if you are here, you are blessed and highly favored. We
We don't know when this threat gon' end Or when it does if things will ever be the same again One thing's for sure We are grateful for The day we could leave our homes and everything's open I'm just giving you all respect Knowing that one day we'll defeat this threat But until then we wish you the best Good health, long life filled with nothing but happiness God bless Sweat and tears, you will leave in the legacy we'll remember for years. I want you to know that we will never forget everything you were doing will surely go down in history. You're the wind beneath our wings, so everyone on the count of three, stand to your feet as you proceed to give them a round with me. Well, just a reminder, keep those videos and pictures coming in on how you're passing the time in the government and post lockdown, or if you want to salute those on the front line, the number again, 477-0546. And remember to stay tuned to the ZNS Network, your best choice for local, regional, and international COVID-19 coverage. We're the only station providing you with live radio and television updates throughout the day, giving you up to the minute information. Our coverage continues at 10 on radio and then on the television network. And be sure to tune into the House of Assembly this morning when the Prime Minister gives an address. That does it for us. Good morning. Watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. everybody and welcome back. Now in this session we're going to talk about the third key area of your health, mental health. And we're going to look at God's promises and God's plan for your mental health. Now you may not realize it, but there's an invisible war going on around you and actually in you 24 hours a day. It is the battle for your mind. Now the reason that battle is so intense is because whatever gets your mind gets you. The Bible talks about this mental battle in the book of 2 Corinthians. In chapter 10, starting with verse 3, the Bible says this. Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are divine power. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Now, these are, are cognitive, uh, mental words, argument, pretension, knowledge. Notice this is a mental battle he's talking about here. And he says, and we take captive 